Hi, hi everyone. Thank you for joining the second session of the February 10th LISP Administration and Programming with DraftSight. Um, I welcome uh, you uh, for joining this webinar. And this is actually a follow-up from uh, the January webinar that we held. Um, we will go through uh, some stuff or a lot of stuff that we covered last time. I want to go through to show it to you again and maybe do it in a bit slower pace. Um, and uh, the plan is to have more webinar like this and this topic of LISP. Hopefully you will find uh, some useful uh, tools to with DraftSight afterward. And uh, furthermore, even contribute to the community with ideas, questions, comments, and so on and so forth in the blog. Uh, my name is Ilan Singer. This is my email on top. Uh, I'm a DraftSet Tech Support Engineer and I'm right now once again here in our new nice building in Walter, Massachusetts near the Boston uh, and near, in Greater Boston. Uh, I work for DraftSite for as a tech support engineer for about four years and um, we will continue now with the uh, with uh, the webinar that uh, we started uh, this series uh, on January. Um, so the slide, the slideshow, the PowerPoint slideshow um, that uh, you're gonna see today is look, it will gonna look very familiar to you if you join the last one or download the slideshow from the community blog. Uh, I basically stripped out some uh, information that uh, I didn't want to, to repeat too much and uh, I think uh, you can get it from the previous one. Having said this, um, that's basically what I just told you um, and this is our reminder for the two websites of the, of the previous one and the current webinar. You can download all the information, the file that we're going to go through. Um, and I make myself a note here to make sure to show you the blog. And it's again, just to encourage you to use the blog. So here is the blog website. That's the for today webinar. Uh, I wish to hear from you and uh, I will encourage you to, to put a, a comments, questions okay over here you can throw comments on anything either, either if it's an administrative issue uh, related to the topic uh, itself and anything uh, you would like uh, to do or to see with uh, this series of webinars so let's move back here quickly to the next slide um, I change a bit this learning objective I added a new one uh, understanding how lips interact with other automation interfaces it should be here uh, I, I and would, I would like to go more in depth to this and to show you this is a good opportunity to review uh, how valuable are the draft site interfaces for automation writing macros to make it more efficient in drafting and CAD management and and to use it for uh, and have better results with the product um, the last uh, learning objective I I estimate that we'll have we will touch it within six or maybe eight weeks that's the more advanced stuff of uh, um, DCL programming mostly okay and this is a slide that you're familiar if it's the first or you forgot the previous stuff just a quick review what is Lisp it's programming language fairly old very simple in a way 
and with this format function or operator is a list of arguments that you can do stuff on them if you type this on the command line and we cover it and this is arithmetic uh, addition of these arguments and that's the draft site reply same thing we have two functions the car and the list which is the single quote here returning a value here which is the first argument of this list of uh, numbers of arguments uh, draft site premium uh, is the version to support Lisp to remind you the standard one doesn't uh, I only put this Lisp trivia question from the last slide because uh, that's I think the most important regarding the using using of Lisp um, so remember we have a symmetrical uh, parentheses uh, in order the inner one and then the outer one that's how it's evaluated by either us when we write it and check it debug it or by the command interpreter which is the command line of uh, draft site okay let's move on to this uh, concept and that's uh, related to the uh, uh, to the new learning objective that I had how Lisp interact with uh, uh, the interfaces other interfaces um, of draft site let me just try to launch this pen from here I see that there is a question for some reason I have difficulty one of the person has this question I'm not sure I think I review it anyway I could launch the pen this uh, you can see my cursor can become also a pen here just to highlight important stuff so uh, this block in the center represents standard draft site which uh, Lisp is not supported unlike the outer uh, block premium draft site that this is available and supported um, but if you you can do uh, automation writing macro and so on with a standard draft site using this uh, method the SCR macros or the diesel I will not cover them but I will refer to them in example today and uh, there is another webinar that I'm running I'll refer to you afterward another different blog you can learn about uh, uh, about uh, the second topic and it also refers a bit to the first one the SCR and diesel and um, once you move to a premium draft site you can see these two links and um, it um, this operation can be enhanced with Lisp draft site in draft set premium so you can have them uh, more right uh, more uh, efficient uh, and um, and we will see it soon in the bottom here these are the resources and implementation of uh, Lisp uh, valuable to you um, so Lisp expression can be run and debug from the command line uh, we already mentioned it Lisp programs can be loaded and unloaded from the command line and um, this is a, a bit uh, this the unload required some uh, uh, clarification I will go through this just keep in mind that it's not uh, uh, straightforward and um, this expression program programs can be embedded with customized toolbars and menus I will show them I will show it to you DCL dialogue control language is a big advantage for you to use and if try to recall from the last webinar I asked the question how many free program Lisp available online uh, for my Google search I, I encountered or landed on the value of two millions two millions which is a huge number I will show you quickly a program relative free program that I downloaded and run with Lisp here with draft site and Lisp okay 
A draft site premium version includes an online Lisp reference manual. This is an important tool that you want to stick to. And Lisp expression and programs can be embedded in standalone add-in or API application. And we will go through this too. Okay, so having said this, um, this is a reminder, if anybody needs a review, I encourage you to go through these examples. And uh, keeping in our, in our mind, memory, that we have true, nil, returns, uh, evaluation of, uh, uh, mathematical evaluation, logical evaluation of list, and so on. Um, this was an example just that I brought up just to reduce some intimidation of using the Lisp reference uh, manual that you c and I gave some explanations so, because sometimes you need some programming skill or understanding how to use bitwise so you can always go to resources either if you took a, in the past long time ago programming class and so on or ask me questions or anybody else in the community who can help you with pinpointed stuff like this. I added another question, if you remember, to this three example and I also gave the answer here. Okay, so I think it's good enough and we can move on. What else we did last time? We, we went to the very basic of uh, list programming from scratch. So we say that we need a text editor like MS Notepad to write a Lisp in the correct syntax, save it in this form within two double quotes, and it creates for us in a, the operating system a, a Lisp file with its icon. There are several ways to load Lisp program in draft site. The one that we use here in, in this workshop, on this webinar, is basically drag and drop it in the graphics area and expecting to see a Lisp um, the Lisp loading reply from the command line as you can see here so this sh actually showed that the program was successfully loaded and the C colon TRIA this code here and we also mentioned it's part of the code we will show it to you later and in another example this uh, but the TRIA this code is the code to run the program. It's an option in the function that cr uh, runs uh, uh, that included in the in the in the program itself over here. And um, having said this, let's move on. And um, these are uh, five important basic functions that define to define a function. Um, the set queue to declare a, a, an argument a, a variable and assign a value to it or, or a list and then uh, the print which is the echo back to the screen and the get point which is a function uh, prompt the user to hit uh, uh, the graphics area and it return basically the coordinate the the coordination value of a point on the screen to to the to the program or to the command line the command interpreter and so on um, and then we move uh, to looping which is uh, an and if condition actually these two are uh, the ele elementary two uh, um, what once again, looping and if condition are the two uh, critically important property of any programming language, including Lisp. Um, so let's play a bit with Lisp with this example. You can see it's a screenshot from the uh, from the Lisp reference. Discard. Uh, so what I will do, as far as I remember, no, I didn't save it here, so let me search for it, for this example. 
and here it is. This is an example that uh, we're gonna run now in, in uh, draft site. Um, the while comma, the while loop. Uh, I will read it with you together. It construct uh, the while construct allows iteration to continue until specific expression evaluates to nil. So we have a ex specific expression here, and once the test expression uh, returns nil or false, the while loop will, br will be broken and terminated. As uh, simple as it sounds. So before I'm loading it, these two lines, this one, and that one in the command line and running run it let's review see what it does the first one is the declaration of the x and assigning a value of zero to it it's nicely written between two parentheses return zero the next one having said it with a x equal to zero and uh, we're moving on to the next line the while so the first we have the uh, test expression x here is equal to zero smaller than five the five it returns true not nil and the while loop will continue and will not break the next uh, statement is to echo to print out the value or the text expression between the two double quotes which is is x equal and that's immediately printed out here in the command line the next one is print x, print the real value of x at this time, which is zero. The third pry uh, um, arg, um, operator is carried return. So we create a new line. And here we have a set of parentheses, which as we learned, we have to start from the very inner one. So x is first increase incremented or increased by 1 x plus 1 so the value of x is 1 now and it assigned again to x so all this st uh, set of parentheses up to here before the la very last one is an increment of x and keeping this value so um, the this um, y loop will run until x will be equal to 5 then it will be broken so 5 times 0 to 4 and then the program terminates and this 5 uh, we may want it or not as a return value we can control it I will show it to you later and uh, will be uh, echoed or print by default to the command line I can tell you that there is a bug here and uh, we will see it soon in draft site that uh, this line uh, because of the loop, when you type it, um, it it get uh, it vanish from the command line or from, or from the, the uh, you cannot scroll and see it. And this is a reported bug. So having said this, let's call up draft site and we'll minimize this uh, window and to save time copy and paste it here oh, sorry here we go so I lost the line just arrange it nicely here so we can run once I guess the other so I set Q x to 0 and now I will copy this line paste it here and you can see the same results it's run ok and uh, this is the problem that we don't have in the scroll here this line but it will be there is a, a bug reported to this Let's close this, minimize this, and move on with our presentation. This is a more advanced command. Uh, before we run it, let's just review it. 
sem semicolon air, uh, lines are commented out and ignored by the command interpreter. This is a define to, to, uh, to define a function. You can see that if you look at the order of parentheses, the very last one close the define or the program actually. So the main define is basically the whole program. C colon any code that you write here, in this case it's E line, is the code that you write, have to type in the command line or to call with another list program to run this program. The set of parentheses here are empty but, but uh, required and it will be discussed later on. It's basically to, uh, to save location for uh, variables uh, that the program may need or not. Here we don't need it. Next thing, we spoke about get point, getting a, and prompting the user and assigning it to an argument. Slash n is for a new line. Commented line explaining what is here. Here we are comparing as long as this area, oh, I'm sorry, this uh, parenthesis from this point to the almost very last one in the order, right? These two, so it's the third here, is true or not equal to false, the while loop will run. So in other words, as long as we are uh, entering a second, and there is a second point. Um, having said this, we have uh, up to this point, two points that uh, the user Type, uh, click on the screen as long as it does it and doesn't it escape to break uh, to make this point to nil that's what the escape will do and we will see it uh, this command this next statement will run what is this line this is a, a command that uh, is a draft site command it's the line command that's the syntax you call up the command you enter you, you you put the command name in two double quotes use the arguments and there is an empty space here which is basically the enter or space bar if you will same thing so this is a line printout the next one is a uh, assigning the uh, same as was with the x and the zero before here point two value is assigned to point one and this is a print uh, just keep in mind that uh, we will discuss about it sooner or later but if you remember the 5 in the last example that was uh, uh, printed out or sent by the while loop to the command line um, having a print, an empty print that echo nothing uh, can prevent such uh, unwanted, if it's unwanted, uh, occurrence so let's try to run this program Uh, first open it just review it make sure it's correct what you can see here if you recall I commented this line here we will play with it and change it actually what I'm gonna do I will uncomment it and I will save the program let me first make sure that it exists where I want it okay it's in this February webinar so I'll save it Okay, and I know that it's in this directory, this February um, directory. It's here, this is the program, right? And I want to load the program. I, I will make some escapes to make sure that uh, the graphics area is uh, can accept a loading of Lisp. Once I see this plus here, I know that it's loaded. Let me open the... And this is the command line, F2 to open it, the command window, and let's try to run the program. So call it program, E line, and this is the first prompt from the program. Click graphics area, it's here, right? This 
this is so we are here in the program I'll click the graphic area and the next point is this prompt here I will click it too and you can see that the program runs uh, I'm typing a line that is all about let's try to change the program adding a comment commenting out uh, this line saving it reloading again the program it was loaded again successfully otherwise I would get an error here let me run the program this time because we commented out uh, this line so the loop continues but uh, always back from the, the first the very the same point of, of point one so you can see the difference in the graphics area just to remind you this small program uh, very introductory exists in the blog so you can play with it let me close it and close the one line and minimize draft site and go back to our presentation um, you can recall that I spoke about uh, uh, the opportunity to load Lisp uh, uh, to run Lisp uh, um, from many many uh, free programs that you can find valuable maybe immediately or by modifying them from outside from out of the world from uh, downloading them from uh, free resources or and so on or from your other cut pro applications um, let me show you this example now first actually I show you a very simple example it's actually I wrote and I will create a new just to clean the graphics area in the command line window uh, this is another program hello lisp it works together with the DCL which is as I said about six maybe eight weeks ahead of us we will write uh, we'll show you how to create command uh, dialogue windows like this and you can see that if I type my name here it will reply with this this is an hello program we will discuss about it more and um, the list program you can see that it calls it works with, a, with this program with DCL so it calls basically it works together with this file and the rest is the beyond us at this time so don't worry about it here is another more interesting program that I download let me open it I put uh, this website here just to keep credit although it's free I read uh, I made sure to read uh, the information in the website in this website that uh, I can use it on my own discretion and so on and so forth it's free to use it's uh, also not, not a big turnkey program but it shows nicely what you can do with Lisp. So uh, let me. It, this drawing I also found find in this website. It has some blocks. Uh, as you can see, there are many uh, entities, blocks, and uh, and other. Um, Element, uh, elements or entities here and let me load this program and this time you can see there is no prompt like we had before because we have no c uh, for some we, we, so we it doesn't print out but that's the c colon first one um, is the program is the program code to run it 
So here is the program, that's the user interface from the DCL file. Um, you can select different uh, object here, volts to enter. So if I select uh, this element here, arbitrarily, and again you can put name, logos here, graphics. Uh, this is an error you may found when you use a program from another card application that you need to investigate. But you, I will ignore this error and you can see that uh, using this program you can do this. Okay? Uh, as much as. So feel free to download programs, maybe play with them, use your offsite, find, uh, find out they work, and ask questions, maybe report a bug if uh, we really welcome it just to improve the quality of the product. Uh, having said this, I think we made nice progress. Close the program. And let me close this file. Destroying. Exit from it. And go back to our presentation. Um, this is a question that uh, came from the field couple times it, uh, this is a property of of draft site as of service spec 3 so it exists a couple good months how do I auto load a list file or files whenever I start a draft site or I start a new drawing it's very important because the program, as you can see, uh, not just uh, is available to run, but if you if it runs already, or um, the parameter or arguments of the of the program, uh, or are inserted to draft site, and I will show it to you later on. Uh, unlike other programming interface, uh, removing or unloading. A list program is not that uh, straightforward. It has some limitations. So just keep in mind, I will show it to you later. But now we're talking about auto loading. And just to encourage you to use the. Sorry about this. And uh, um, we are here in this slide. I want to take you to the, to the Lisp reference to show you this example it's and the reason I use it because it's actually written here it's all about the startup list LSP file that's the key file to auto start but it's not uh, explained here uh, I will ask uh, documentation to add actually this explanation that I put here for you that you will know, will uh, understand soon. So what it says here, you have to create a, a file, the startup LSP, which is a list program, and any program that you want to load upon startup, it should be, uh, it should be written as this: load this program. You don't need to write dot LSP here, because. Uh, the startup understand that you are dealing with a, a list program. Keep in mind that uh, the C colon here is the path in the desktop, and uh, unlike a window pass convention, this is a, the, the slash, the backslash is forward slash. This is a note for the user that the program was load, and the slash in here is a new line. So in the new line after it's load, uh, this program is loaded, you will have uh, feedback that uh, this program was actually loaded when, you, when a new drawing is open or draft side is started. So having said this, let's see what we, what we have in C uh, drive in my system. And we want to confirm with this rule. We want to go to Tools, Options, and select File Location, System, Support File, I know I'm running too fast, but uh, don't worry about it. I will show it to you. 
you want in a specific location which is this one you want to tell draft site that this important file the startup.lsp exists so let let's uh, first review or look at our C drive so you can see that I have a startup .lsp I will just rename it that's a reminder for me to do it so now I have a startup lsp file right and I, I in this case I only deal with one program I can add more programs so here is the program ABC and this is the prompt for the user right this content will be thrown to the command line with the carriage return close it because you don't need it we want to make sure that the C is defined nicely in this according to this direction here so let's go to draft site and I will help you looking at this we want to go to tools right options uh, file locations system and support file system and support file and, and here is the C uh, you can have many files here as you want you can see each time um, a drawing is open or draft site is started this search pass is scanned all this list is scanned by draft site to acknowledge that there are um, files that you need to take care of I what I did here I added I took C and I put it in the very top you can change it you can move it down play with this depend on your needs or your priorities and what's the ABC we forgot to look at AB I forgot actually to look at the ABC to, to make sure it exists. I have a program ABC, and this is the program. Uh, we visited it last uh, webinar, the first one. It's a it's putting two points and creating a line with them on the graphics area. Very simple. And now let's go to draft site see if it will loaded. And the lisp, this ABC lisp, when I start a new drawing. So here, ABC was loaded, and and you may tell yourself, I want to make sure that it was loaded. So let me try running the program, ABC. And ABC exists. Okay, you can see that it created a line for me. So this is a good production tool or knowledge for auto start and now I will just take a quick look at uh, the, and I see that there is no question so I hope everything is clear. Um, we cover this. This is another question that can, I came across a couple times from the field. And, and I mentioned it to you before. A list program is actually a variable that contains program information, right? So how, how can I stop a list program? And if I stop the, the list program because it's a command interpreter and the, and the command interpreter, the command line reads the list program line by line, like almost or, or like we do. Uh, will all the arguments and the variable that may were that may assign to them were removed from list from the draft site not necessarily uh, but uh, we can uh, set values to um, any argument by assigning nil or empty uh, value to it in this case or false value if you will so if I type set Q C and it's not C colon it's not the C drive it's just the command ABC to nil from now on I will not be able to run uh, my ABC program let's check it if it's correct
So we were here, I'm sorry for moving the slides to the unneeded one. And I'm here and I will type the command set Q C colon A B C nil close parenthesis and it was it ran successfully because I got the uh, nil feedback and let's try let's try to see if it's correct let's try to run the program and I got unrecognizes comma and command A B C unlike before right it was loaded automatically and of course if you move on with the code you can int you can uh, use this co uh, logic in within the command within the program itself I meant to say um, I want to go back quickly to the diagram to this diagram and to cover more stuff that I mentioned uh, we spoke about SCR SCR uh, if you recall it's a very very basic script available in standard draft site and but it can be supported by a Lisp Lisp, Lisp can use other files like uh, Lisp itself call them as we saw or other files that draft side recognize text files dcl file as i showed you before and also scr scr is a is a type of a script that uh, um that uh, draft site uh, uh, can use and let me show you what i'm talking about i have a file let's go back to my c drive first i will show you an SCR program. Um, I have a couple of them here. How about using this one? Um, what is this? What do I have here? Um, what I have here is an SCR script and it has line by line uh, user interaction emulation with the command line saved in a file of an SCR type so we create this file the same as we created Lisp with, within two double quote we save it from notepad okay give it a name and so on now having said this what's happening if we type a command uh, a command that have a user interface window with a hyphen in front the answer is the command will run in the command line and I will show it to you literally I copy this command with a minus in front F2 I will paste it here okay so you can see that the textile command uh, will run from the command line dialog and not if I type textile without the hyphen it will run with a GUI okay having said this if I run the command uh, any uh, user inser insertion here e even if it's a, if I want to, to have a list or let me go back to the program if I type standard one over here that's my input right and right standard one now it's asking me for a font I will put this font okay and the height of the text and so on and so forth and then I will have no no so to save time I will not do it but I will show you uh, how can I run this command let's say I want to have this textile in specific uh, occasion so instead of running either the command dialog or uh, or um, 
or or uh, even in command line tedious typing I'm, I, I it is possible to load this program with the script command right and I can call this SCR so if I put C colon here right and I will call this command it will open and run it from him draft site this is very basic uh, the most basic way to run a script in draft site but what nice we uh, with uh, Lisp I can involve Lisp to run it together with this program in other words the same as I loaded um, a Lisp a Lisp file I can load this program if I will type it correctly of course so just to save time I will go here and I will copy the name and I will paste it here because it's a no slip I have to put a file type close the parent the double quote and the parentheses there is a problem here supposed to run I'm not sure why let me try I have another program here which is more simple I'm not sure why it's not running and um, this is a even more a bit different in uh, program or maybe even more interesting because it's an SCR program that run a Lisp statement let me try running it here So you see, I'm not sure why the first one wasn't run, I have to check it. I don't have any parentheses missing here, you can see it's the same. But you see, I run the program and there was 1 plus 1 in Lisp uh, syntax and it returned 1, a uh, 2, I'm sorry. So the program was run successfully. This should run too, I will check it and see why it wasn't run. What I meant to say is this. Anyway, let's move on. Um, we'll have we have time to show you two more examples. So we cover this uh, link. Now I I'd like to show you this link. Um, you may. Uh, have some experience with uh, let me close this or we'll make it bigger uh, you may have some experience uh, with customization of draft site user interface and if not uh, uh, there I will refer you to uh, learning tools that we put uh, already uh, online and there is an option to customize the user interface to as toolbars and menu bars uh, and it uses spe as a specific command language what i'm saying by this and i'll do it very very briefly but if you run the customization it, you can run it from the toolbar from um, and you take a specific program like this one this is a program that you can that will run a, that will have this command and the interface has a menu called shell or a toolbar called shell and again if you want to learn it more it's a very useful more advanced than the, the SCR script uh, in a way similar or equivalent or have some properties of Lisp 
for, for automation for writing macro so the commands are written here and then once you put commands this command which is on this button you can assign them to menu bars so these are the commands it's a very basic explanation there are more rules that you need to learn about or practice anyway what I did here I created an interface a macro with two ways to run it the first one is is uh, uh, on the list here uh, from top is a lisp shell and you can see here that there is expression uh, that looks similar to the code that we went through with the line there is a command if you remember we had the line and points here we have command shell and argument that the shell will get in this case we're running window explorer and ask him to open the C, uh, uh, the C drive or the C directory. You don't have to. Uh, it's not necessary to run it in Lisp, although some Lisp are proprietary argument that um, that I will show you later in a different uh, example. So sometimes you need Lisp if you want specific operations, and again you will need a premium version. But if you have a, such a basic uh, command just just run in explorer you can use the standard and as I showed you before you can use um, you can use a, a shell com uh, the shell command and the same argument having said this I will load this uh, the shell program for you and actually I loaded it here is the toolbar that you may recall that you saw and if I click the, you can see that it opened for me C drive and I can run it also there is a little uh, tooltip here standard shell and it also opened for me this um, I'm sorry uh, the C drive so that's what uh, that's a uh, uh, an example how to use uh, how to use Lisp with expressions with uh, with uh, um, customizing the user interface with toolbars you can also create menu bars and change it and put icons and make your program maybe more productive so this was cover this point um, the last thing that I plan to do to today to show you is how we can use Lisp with API program uh, interface so API is the highest level and the most robust uh, programming interface that you can uh, use with uh, with draft site you can write a robust program that will write within draft site if it's an add-in or standalone and I will show you a standalone let me just make sure that nobody has a question I hope you will have any question or comment but feel free again so let's now deal with this issue here I will show you um, I will show you um, an API program and again if you have no experience with API don't worry about it you can catch up it's a longer le learning curve of course than Lisp um, but what I wanted to show you you may be familiar uh, you, you are you supposed to be familiar with you can see that there are familiar syntax in this C sharp program here is our load command that we came across remember the ABC so what I'm doing literally here I'm I'm loading the Lisp ABC program and I'm also running it and then I'm running a command same remember the way the line so here I'm running a circle 
command circle this is also a lisp expression and this is an another a lisp command which is get angle and i'm assigning it to ang variable and there is a prompt for the user probably in the command line and what i told you is commented here in green so the visual studio debugger which is this screen actually gi nicely give you the the lisp uh, command syntax in brown here and um, i can tell you that uh, the api uh, co command to run lisp is the run command in c sharp but this is beyond our needs we don't need to know about this okay we need to know about this i can tell you also just probably you're curious to know what the program does uh, so the program there is another run command here that work with uh, this specific program interface it takes argument from the user make sure that it's in the right format and then run it so if I in other words you will see it if I type in the command interface arc or line or circle or whatever any draft site command it will run it for me and the command actually the user interface look like this okay and again the code I showed it to you that's just to show you very different um, a way of approach of course this is much modern uh, environment it is c-sharp in visual studio and uh, then uh, the list which is 52 years old and uh, very limited as a command interpreter in uh, the way to write a program debug it and so on um, but uh, we can run this program just to see our list it is in debug mode so all these five points will force the program to stop and actually the command output will be shown in the command line of draft site once we run it let me minimize this just to arrange my desktop here to help you look at this so let's run this program uh, do you want to do this want to do this and I will run the program so you remember this little window it was now it's running independently outside the uh, uh, visual studio so I will write I will run the arc command you can see that draft side responded with arc which is okay we can run it nothing to do with lisp yet and I created an arc the command continued and it went here to load ABC if you recall I uh, I deleted the ABC it still loaded in a way but I eliminated the option to run the ABC with, with uh, the statement is setting to nil but it doesn't it's not that important I'm now I'm reload I can reload it again so no matter what I'm I'm loading it again as you can see here and now I will run the the ABC program enter the starting point ending point I created the line that's from the ABC if you recall and now we'll continue I will create a circle with these parameters Here is my circle, and I will continue down here. And now I'm here. Uh, this is a, I don't want to get through this, we don't have too much time, but this is a program 
from uh, you can learn about the dictionary this command it, uh, this uh, syntax from the Lisp help menu and let me just move on quickly with the program because our time is almost finished and this this is another program in the dictionary again I took it from the um, help the Lisp help and the last command is very important is to get the environment variable of draft site which can be only run with Lisp you can read about the get env in the help of the Lisp manual and you can see that it printed all my environment variable here okay and the program finished I can terminate it and this is fine and I think we covered that we covered all the stuff that I want plan to today we still have a hiccup if you remember with this SCR that wasn't loaded uh, and I just want to show you the last slide I believe this one this is also a question came from the field I'll do it very quickly I know we uh, exceeded uh, an hour that I planned for this webinar um, you will ha you will come across uh, programs that come from other card application uh, like this one it's, it's very possible so there are um, proprietary syntax from other card application like visualist from Autodesk that we are not we don't support so Try to open or debug this program as I showed you with text editor using uh, and looking for unsupported uh, syntax like this one VL print to string this command which is not supported by draft set VL means that it's Visual Lisp you sometimes you can see a reference to file that is not supported like the ARX Okay, so keep in mind that you want to warn a, a client or a colleague who wants to use a, a list from another program and that you, the program needs to modify. Then we come with this question, so on and so forth. I can recommend you to go out there to, to forums online and to discuss with colleagues because uh, some other people uh, may uh, come across um, such issues in in draft site or other program that they want to um, solve and I think this is all about yeah that's the last slide um, I just want to wrap it up now um, I hope uh, that uh, I, I talked about it uh, last week, uh, last month. Uh, next week we have a uh, solid world. We're gonna run a webinar there. Uh, web, uh, I'm sorry, workshop there about customization the, that I showed you briefly today. We're gonna have an hour workshop to deal with uh, to create a user interface. Um, it's on the website. Uh, on the swim uh, there is information about it and actually if you don't come to the show let me show it to you uh, here is the blog for it that I just placed okay so this is the show you can download this file and the tutorial the hands out and run it independently in your shop or wherever, or wherever you want and it's you don't need the premium draft site for this uh, this is what it's going to cover okay uh, i just want to make sure that you do not have questions and i don't see that you have so, so i think we're approaching the wrap out I'd like to thank you for joining this webinar and wish you a nice day and hope to hear from you in the blog or and to see you in the next webinar. Have a nice day and also a nice weekend.
goodbye and thank you